Hi, and welcome to another Complete 3D Concepts video tutorial. My name is Josh, and in this tutorial, we will be taking a look at how to insert Point Cloud into Autodesk Inventor. To keep this tutorial short and sweet, we will only cover the insertion process and settings that you will see during this process. In future tutorials, I will go into more details about workflows and best practices when working with Point Clouds, but for now, we will just cover the insertion process. So, let's get into it. You can insert a point cloud into either an assembly or a part file. There are some pros and cons to both that we will cover in an upcoming tutorial, but my preference is to insert each point cloud into its own part file. So here we are in our new part. We will need to go to the Manage tab on our ribbon. Then we want the Attach button in the point cloud panel. Click that and browse to your point cloud. You can insert either an RCP or an RCS file. Both are Autodesk Recap files. In my case, I have an RCP file, but they both do the same thing. If you have a, any other point cloud format, like an E57 file, you'll need to import that into Recap first. So to start your import process, you can either double click on the RCP file, or you can click it once and then click on Open. Inventor then returns to your part and starts to fill in a preview of your point cloud. You don't have to wait for this preview to complete to start your next step. Just click anywhere in model space and this dialog box will appear. My typical workflow is to insert at origin and leave the rotation values at zero. I'll get into why I do this in another tutorial, but what we are more interested in here is the adjust density settings. The density gradient adjusts how dense the point cloud appears, as you can see when I slide the slider. I typically leave this at 10 for best results when working with a point cloud. The maximum allowed points will determine how many points Inventor will automatically display for you at any one time. This is saying that there are only 4.2 million points attached in this particular point cloud, but I know that is not correct. There are a lot more in this point cloud, into the hundreds of millions in fact. So I like to set my settings at about 50 million. You, uh, you can do that by either the slider or just type in 50 here. You will need to work out what settings work best for your computer by a bit of trial and error. These settings work for me, but they may not work for you. So have a play around and see how you go. If your computer is struggling, reduce the density or the maximum points and see how that goes. If your computer handles it fine, then feel free to boost the maximum allowed points. The good news is that once you have settings that work for your computer, you can make a note of those settings and those same settings should work on that computer every time as it's the computer that governs these settings and not Inventor or the Point Cloud. Most scan data or point clouds should come to you at a 1 is to 1 scale and all scan data that comes from complete 3D concepts will be at 1 is to 1. So just leave this at 1. If you need or want to though, you can adjust the scale here. So click OK and your point cloud is inserted. You'll now see a point clouds folder at the top of your feature tree with your point cloud in it. If you find that your computer is struggling a little bit with the settings that you used when you inserted the point cloud, you can either double click the point cloud or right click and select edit data. This will get you your dialog box back and you can change the settings. All the changes are instant and there shouldn't be a need to close or reopen the part. And that's it, you have a point cloud to work with in Inventor. I hope this has helped some of you guys out. In the future I'll be doing more in-depth videos on how to work with point clouds in Inventor as well as some other software. In those I'll be covering things like workflows, best practices and some tips and tricks as well. So if you like what you've seen here, don't forget to click the like button below to let me know and be sure to subscribe just so that you can stay up to date with all of that. Thanks for watching and catch you next time.